Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna talk about living alone. Some things that I'm very familiar with because I've been doing that almost my whole life. I've been living away from my family since I was 15 and now I'm 23. So most of my adult life and my teenage years are spent living by myself. And I have a lot to talk about it because I think that it's a topic that like I hold really close to my heart. I used to have a lot of struggles with it, but now I'm finally at a place that I feel like I love living by myself. And so I wanted to make a video to talk about it, help you, you know, understand more about living by yourself if, you know, that's also what you want to do or you're about to do. I hope that this video may be able to help you out. Since I was 15, with 10, I moved away from my family to study in a high school that's very far away from my house. That was the first time that I had to be responsible for basically almost everything from, you know, deciding what to eat or when to go to bed or what to do during any given day. I was one of the only ones in my class who lived away from my family. And honestly, that made me feel kind of special. When I first started living by myself, my place was like a mess. I I was so messy, so dirty. You you have no ideas. I would have like clothes all on the floor. Like my desk would be just a complete mess of papers and books and everything. It's just funny when I think back to that period because now I'm like I'm not I'm not a clean freak, but I do like to keep my space very tidy now. But <laughs> I just find it funny. I wish, I wish that I have a picture of my place back then, but I honestly, I used to have a lot of ants, a lot of um, cockroaches in my room. I just honestly, it was, it was really disgusting. And I would like sleep on the floor, sleep on the clothes that I have on the floor. So <laughs> whenever I want to change, I would just like, try to find the clothes that I want, the pieces of clothes that I want through the pile that I have on the floor. I didn't really have a closet, like all my clothes were on the floor. And it's like really, really crazy for me to think back to that period now that I have changed so much. So that was like my first experience of living by myself. I was known in my whole family for being like the messiest, the, the dirtiest, just all that stuff. And for some weird reason, I kind of took pride in that, that, oh, I don't really care about, you know, being clean or being organized. That is so boring. I'm like, you know, I want to be messy. I want to be like, you know, different. <laughs> so I was like that in my grade 10, in my grade 11. Even when I have friends coming over to my, it was just like a room that I rented in a house. So even when I have friends coming over to my room, they would be disgusted by how you know because on the outside I'm like always I always wear like different clothes every day or it's just like very look put together but when they actually come to my room they realize that how how just disgusting I live or how disgusting I am. It's just very funny for me now that I look back. I was like that in grade 10, grade 11. And then at the end of grade 11, I moved to Canada to study grade 12. So I studied grade 12 in Hamilton. And that was when I first have a roommate. It was two of us. We share like a room with bunk bed. I was... I don't remember, but uh, it was two of us. We share a room, kind of like just small like this and a washroom. So it's, it's quite small. And that was like the first time that I realized that I have to kind of like, you know, get my shit together and be organized or else my roommate will be really mad at me. That was the first time that I learned to be tidy and organized-ish. My roommate, of course, was still much more clean than me, but that was, my first progress. Coming to Canada was the first time that I actually have to be on my own. It's funny because when I first came to Canada, that was the first time that I ever flew on the plane. That was the first time that I have a roommate, like I said, the first time that I went to a different country 
Before that, I was just in Vietnam and never been on an airplane before. So I was like a complete noob when I came to Canada, just very fresh off the boat. So the one year that I spent in high school in Canada was honestly amazing because I made a lot of great friends in my dorm. My real struggle of living by myself started when I move to Mississauga to go to my university. I think that when you have a roommate and when you live in a dorm with like a bunch of other high school kids who also just international students like you, it was very easy for me to make friends and I'm still great friends with them until now. But when I moved to the university dorm or residence, everyone has their own room and it was a lot harder to make friends because like people would like be in different programs and you may not have classes with them all the time and it's like a different environment in university compared to high school because the university is much bigger and you know there's just a lot more students and i think i was like really overwhelmed with how big this new environment was it was slightly harder for me to make friends i still remember to this day like the first birthday that i spent in my uh, university residence i was by myself in my dorm room <laughs> listening to home by michael buble and just like cry my eyeballs out because i miss my family so much i was all by myself it was like the first day of school the second first or second day of university and I basically had no friends and I'm in the room by myself on my birthday and it was like still memories that's like very vivid in my in my mind till this day just because of how emotional I was and how lonely I felt being all by myself because before that I never have to spend my birthday by myself so the birthday the first birthday that I spent away from home in a foreign country was quite hard emotionally but things did get better and i started making new friends birthday or you know special occasions like new years or you know just holidays especially birthday though birthday is like my weak spots like i always feel so sad on my birthday when i'm in canada like i just really want to be back home like every year every time it's like special occasion birthdays i would feel <sighs> very homesick and very very emotional and very like lonely and just kind of like pity myself like oh, why am i why am i here like why did i choose to come to canada to just do all of this by myself but come back to the point which is things did get better and i didn't make new friends i eventually moved out of my dorm in my third year of university and i started living in a condo at first i lived with a roommate and actually during that time was when i started my youtube channel right in the living room that was when i filmed my first video i think so no 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 right in the in the bedroom so a bedroom that looks kind of exactly like this like 80 percent 90 percent looks exactly like this that's when i filmed my first video on my iphone i believe that 2019 is a year it's all year. It's a year that we just don't give a fuck about what other people think and just go for our dreams. That was when I first started my YouTube channel. I think that living by myself really inspired me to do that. I think if I were in Vietnam, if I didn't come to Canada, if I still live with my parents, like I would not have the, you know, courage to start my own youtube channel to do my own things just because of the culture there like everyone is so judgy you know like if i post a video like i don't know people would just just judge a lot and just you know talk bad behind your back a lot like it's just like the culture of gossiping and judge judgments please please i don't have any time for any gossip now eh yes look at you and most of the body shaming that I ever experienced happened when I was in Vietnam. So that's why I just really wanted to, to come here to Canada or to a new country, to any new country, to be honest, and to be by myself. So I don't have to hear all those negative words being around those negativity, despite all the loneliness and the, you know, down moments. I, I still feel like it's, it's very worth it that I come here and do my own things, be on my own, and along the way, create something 
for myself and learn to be my best friend, learn to be my best supporter. I always get off track. Back to the YouTube thing. So that's when I first started YouTube. I don't even know why I tell you all this. It's not about my YouTube channel. This is about living alone. That's my point though. Like when you live by yourself, you have, I feel like you're more, you're more likely to start something for yourself or, or kind of like create a separate path or a new path for yourself that is not expected by your parents or your family. Actually, over time, I have, you know, really learn to at first accept or be okay with my loneliness with being alone and then over time i have learned to also love not only just accept but love the time that i spend by myself love the loneliness love being by myself and my number one piece of advice to get to that place is to just feel your feelings before realizing that when i used to repress my feelings a lot when i felt lonely i would just like ignore that feeling and like try to distract myself with other activities with like doing something so i don't have to feel that negative feeling so i don't have to feel lonely so i don't have to feel like i miss my friends i miss my family i just try to ignore it and not let myself feel that feeling but i realized that once i give myself the permission to feel the feeling fully a hundred percent and just sit with it and just cry as much as i want or just feel down as long for as long as i want and not ignore it or not put any pressure on myself to like you have to get over this like you choose this life like just get over it already like not tell myself those things and just be gentle with myself and say to myself that it's okay it's okay you can feel this take as much time as you want it's okay you're doing so well. Like I think that being gentle and kind to yourself during the times that you feel lonely or, or down is so important. It will help you to process the feeling a lot, a lot better than ignoring it or trying to do other things so you don't have to deal with it. I believe that just dealing with the feelings heads on and just let yourself, give yourself the permission to feel whatever comes up for you and be gentle. To yourself during that whole process i think once i truly realize that that's when i finally you know make peace with my loneliness make peace with my negative moments like i no longer beat myself up for feeling down a day or a week and not getting anything done or missing my family so much and just i let myself feel that and i forgive myself for 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 everything and not beating myself up for anything especially when you're by yourself i'm by myself most of the time most of the days of the week and i realize if i don't treat myself kindly if i don't support myself or love myself like someone i love then who else because i'm by myself right i think that's just my little piece of advice and i hope that you can always be gentle on yourself and support yourself through everything what i also learned from living by myself for the longest time is that i am the only one who can make me happy like over time i've been in a lot of relationships and <laughs> that sounds bad oh my god what slay queen <laughs> but i mean i've been through a few relationships and because i live all by myself in a foreign country so in the past when i was in a relationship i kind of made that person like my whole support system you know like that person kind of just became like my family in canada and i was just depend on them so much for my emotional support and just mental support and everything i just depends so much on my partners and I realize that it's not a good thing. I realize that because once the relationship ended for whatever reason or we no longer together, I was just like crushed, 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 crushed to like pieces and it's it took me a long time to get back up, to get over a relationship because I depended on them so much. I kind of just in a way like lost a part of myself in the relationship because I looked to them for support. I looked to them for the validation, for the love that I like that I didn't get to receive from living with families or seeing families. So anyway, <laughs> I realized that I am capable of giving myself 
all the love, the validation, the support that I crave from my partner, that I crave from my family, that I crave from anyone. I am capable of giving that to myself. That's my biggest realization of 2020 and 2021. 2021, I say. I think starting from like mid-2021 was when I really just like, oh, I love being by myself because I make peace with my loneliness. Whenever it comes up, I just accept it. I let myself feel it. And also I know that I am capable of giving myself all the love, support, validation that I crave from other people. There's also something that I start doing that completely changed the game for me, which it is, it is, it is um, going on solo dates, going on dates with myself. I do this every single week. It's the thing that, you know, keep my mental health together, keep me from, from not falling apart. I feel like we crave a lot of things from our significant other or a romantic relationship or we ex expect a romantic relationship to bring to our life the things that we feel like we do not have right now. Once I realized that I'm actually capable of doing all of that, to myself. I'm actually capable of loving myself the way my significant other would love me. I'm actually capable of loving myself the way I want my dad to love me or I want my mother to love me. I'm able to do that for myself and I'm able to bring myself on a date or bring myself to go solo traveling or to do whatever activities that I wanted to do with other people. I'm able to do that with myself and it's actually fun like it's exciting in its own way you get to spend a lot of time with yourself and you get to understand your thoughts and your emotions a lot more my point is a lot of times when we spend time with ourselves we may occupy um, ourselves or our mind with something like our phone gadgets movies anything that's not really spending time with yourself that's just spending time doing something on your own but spending time with yourself is go within is to sit with yourself and really listen to what you want listen to what you need listen to that inner child in you try to understand it and try to love it and try to nurture it and try to embrace it that's spending time with yourself that's the real way to learn to love being by yourself so yeah i live by myself i get lonely sometimes but I love all of it. I love all the experience and I just accept whatever comes up for me. I honestly feel like living by myself is a big part of my identity, is a big part of who, what made me become the person that I am today. If you ever think of, you know, moving out or living by yourself, moving to a new country, starting all over again, I would totally support you in whatever your heart tells you to do. I think that living by yourself will teach you a lot about yourself, will help you get to know you a lot more. And I think that that's a beautiful thing. So that's it for today's video. And till next time, love yourself, be kind to yourself, and treat others the same way. Bye-bye. <laughs>